Every day, school nutrition professionals serve millions of children made from scratch meals. Many schools are getting back to the basics when preparing the high quality and nutritious foods students need to learn. Cooking from scratch requires careful production planning. Some food may even be prepared in advance and cooled. School nutrition employees typically end their workday two hours after the end of lunch service. Because of this schedule, employees must often prepare food and then rapidly cool it before placing it into storage for service the next day. The recommendations in this video will help you manage food safety when cooling food within your scheduling constraints. According to FDA food code guidelines, food must pass through the most dangerous part of the temperature danger zone, 135 degrees Fahrenheit to 70 degrees Fahrenheit, within two hours as it cools. Food must further cool to 41 degrees Fahrenheit. The total cooling time cannot exceed six hours. Both of these guidelines must be met to minimize the potential for growth of microorganisms. Remember, always follow state or local health department requirements if they differ from FDA guidelines. Several factors affect how quickly foods will cool. The first factor is the amount of food being cooled. Large quantities take longer to cool than small quantities. For example, two quarts takes longer to cool than two cups. The second factor is the container in which the food is cooled. Both material and depth are important characteristics of the container. Food cools faster in stainless steel than plastic because stainless steel transfers heat from food faster than plastic does. Food cools faster in a 2-inch pan than in a 4-inch pan because heat disperses faster from a shallow pan than from a deep pan. The third factor is the density of the food. Denser foods take longer to cool. For example, lasagna takes longer to cool than tomato sauce. In school nutrition operations, freezers and refrigerators are the most frequently used pieces of cooling equipment. A blast chiller is the most effective type of equipment for cooling food quickly enough to meet the FDA food code guidelines. Unfortunately, only 8% of school nutrition operations have blast chillers. Although costly, purchasing a blast chiller could be worth the investment to cool foods quickly and safely. Regardless of the equipment used, it is essential that all team members responsible for cooling foods understand how to accurately take and record temperatures. Food temperatures should be recorded at regular intervals, for example, every 30 minutes. Remember to use a clean, sanitized, and calibrated thermometer when monitoring temperatures. Record the temperature and the time the temperature was checked in your cooling log every time you measure the internal temperature of the food until it reaches the appropriate temperature. Refrigerators and freezers, when used in combination with 2-inch pans and other methods that speed up the cooling process, can cool foods quickly enough to meet the FDA food code guidelines for time and temperature. Some methods that speed up the cooling process include stirring food during cooling, putting food into smaller containers, and using an ice bath. Let's take a closer look at these cooling methods. Remember, always follow state or local health department requirements. Stirring speeds up cooling and helps to ensure that cold air reaches all parts of the food evenly. Stir the food at frequent intervals, every 15 to 20 minutes, for example. Stirring food with ice paddles or chill sticks cools foods very quickly. Cooling sticks and ice paddles are food-grade plastic tools that are filled with water and frozen. It's important to purchase equipment specifically made for this purpose rather than reusing empty food or beverage containers. The ice paddles or chill sticks must be used to stir the food and must be replaced as they thaw. Simply placing the sticks or paddles in hot food is not effective. Be sure to wash and sanitize the cold paddles or chill sticks after each use. After food has finished cooking, transfer it to 2-inch pans. While cooling, the depth of the food should be no more than 2 inches. If you do not have the preferred 2-inch pans, use a 4-inch pan and be sure not to fill it more than 2 inches. Items that cannot be transferred to another pan, such as lasagna or macaroni and cheese, should be cooked in a 2-inch pan. Use only pans that are made of aluminum or stainless steel when cooling foods. 
If cooling soups, stews, or sauces in a deep container, use an active cooling method, such as a chill stick or ice paddle. Not all foods can be poured into containers. For large, solid foods like meat or poultry, cut the food into smaller, thinner portions. Each piece will cool faster when divided. Ice baths are an effective way to speed up the cooling process. To use this cooling method, make an ice bath by mixing ice and water in a container larger than the pans that you intend to cool. Place two inch pans of hot food into an ice bath of ice and water. Stir food periodically, for example, every 15 to 20 minutes. Be sure to replace the ice frequently as it melts. If staff will not be present to replace the melted ice, this method will not cool foods effectively. Remember to monitor temperatures as the food is cooling. When storing cooked food in the refrigerator or freezer, label food item with the product name, date, and time and temperature of the last temperature reading. Place the food in a protected location in the back of the refrigerator or freezer. Separate food items so air can flow freely around them. Be prepared to take corrective actions if the food is not cooling quickly enough. Speak with your supervisor regarding appropriate correction steps you should take. The first two hours of cooling is very critical. Supervisors should manage production schedules so that staff have adequate time to monitor food temperatures and to actively cool foods during the first two hours of cooling so that the temperature is less than 70 degrees Fahrenheit. If the internal temperature of the food does not reach 70 degrees Fahrenheit within two hours, corrective action should be taken. Reheat the food to 165 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 seconds and begin the cooling process again. Using correct food cooling techniques is essential for ensuring food safety. Our student customers are depending on us. Review your program's standard operating procedures for cooling food. Be sure appropriate equipment is available to cool foods properly and that you use the techniques discussed. Remember that it is critical to take and record temperatures correctly and at regular intervals. Finally, be sure to take corrective actions if cooling does not occur quickly enough to meet the FDA food code guidelines. If you need additional information about cooling equipment or practices, please contact the National Food Service Management Institute.